Hey guys, so today we're talking about... Wait, that's... Am I in log now? Okay, let me fix this. In the meantime, I'll show you how I grade my videos. Hey guys, Nathan here. So, as I've mentioned before, I shoot everything in this channel on a Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I'm shooting that in a log profile, and well, I have to grade it. So I figured I'd show y'all how I do that and some of the techniques I use to make things go a little bit faster so I can get these tutorials to you. But before we get into that, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week every Monday and Thursday, but enough of me yammering. Let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I do for grading can be done in the free version of Resolve. So we're going to grab our footage and bring it onto the timeline and right off the jump you can see we have these black bars here. Now I shoot in 4K DCI so I can use the full sensor of my camera but when I output videos I want it to be a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio so you can see as much of Resolve as possible. So what we're going to do, we're going to come into our settings, go into image scaling, and then in this bit here, we want to scale full frame with crop. Boom. Now we can do some readjusting, and I don't like that little bit of a light switch back there, so we're just going to move over, scooch. Perfect. Now we're gonna go into the color page. So right off the bat, I'm gonna right click on my clip and I want to add it into a new group. We can call it whatever we want and then we're just gonna save that. So now we're gonna do our grading in the group post clip and I'll explain why more later. So then we'll just press Z to expand our preview window and get started. Now I shoot everything in black magic raw so we can just check out our project settings. I'm shooting at 1600 ISO with yada yada for color temperature and everything like that. But we're gonna get started by bringing up our contrast and setting our exposure to a level that we like. So I'm just gonna bring this puppy up a whole bunch and you may think, whoa, this is looking horrendous. Just give me a second here. Okay, so now I'm gonna pump my offset up a bit and I'm gonna bring my gamma up because I'm noticing that I'm really hot on the top of my head but in other parts of my face, it's not where I want it. So check this out. I'm gonna bring my gamma way up, okay? And then I'm gonna bring my gain way down. Now this is much closer to what we want and then I can also go into my shadows in my log controls and I just want to bring that down a little bit because I like it when my blacks are, well, fairly black. So now let's go in and add some saturation to this. I usually park it at around 70. Now, some of y'all may have caught on to this, but I'm super lazy. So in pretty much every one of my videos, I'm wearing a white shirt as a white balance reference. So I'm gonna grab my white eyedropper tool and what I like to do is I just like to check and see where it's sitting. So I've done this on the channel a ton, but we have 181 on the red, 176 in the green, and 174 on the blue. So let's just click on that sucker, and that should help us with our white balance. And we're just gonna double check here. Yeah, the values are coming in much closer throughout the shirt, more or less, so. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Plus, I think it's one of those things that now that you've seen it, you're never gonna unsee it in my videos. There's always gonna be something white that I'm wearing because I'm lazy. <laughs> And actually just for fun, I'm gonna bring down my pivot a little bit to make things a bit brighter and then bring down my offset. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So right off, we can check out the before and the after. Not a fair comparison because it's starting with log, which it was never meant to be displayed in log. So this is more a normalized shot. Now we're gonna add our next node with Alt S in the keyboard. And what I wanna do is I just wanna touch up my skin tones a little bit. So I'm gonna check and see where they're sitting. I'm just making a little window and grabbing my highlight and then I'm gonna go into my vector scope. Now, as we can see, we're close, but we're coming in a little bit green. So what I wanna do is I'm actually just gonna come out of highlight and I'm going to uh, just deselect my pen tool and then go into my curves and my hue versus hue. I'm then gonna click on my yellow and what I wanna do is I wanna push that in the purple direction slightly. So, you know, if you wanna go full, whatever, Hulk mode or something like that, then you could definitely do that, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a tiny push 
in this would be green so then up would be purple and we just want a tiny little bit and just for kicks we can check and see how that is impacting yeah boom now we're bang on the line which is exactly what we want so we're going to deselect that and you can see the before and the after now we're going to add a new node with alt s and this is where we get into our keying so i'm going to be clear i don't think you need to qualify skin in every situation However, with this particular shot, I do find it is helpful to get rid of some of my wrinkles and things like that, but you do not need to qualify skin to make a shot look good. Just wanna be clear, and I'll show more about that in the future, but just wanna be totally clear. So we're gonna go in and grab it on my face here, and we're gonna bring up our highlight tool and see how we're doing. So we wanna bring out our hue a little bit just to cover more of an area. Yeah, that's looking pretty not too bad. Pick our range that we want to select. Okay, great. Now, um, we're noticing a ton of other stuff in here. So let's see if we can get rid of some of that by adjusting our saturation. Yeah, that helps a bit. Okay, what I think we're going to have to do is come into our finesse controls. And we're going to bring up our denoise quite a bit. And then we're going to clean up our black. Okay, that's looking much better, but you may notice the microphone is in the shot and I wanna get rid of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come out of highlight and I'm going to use my windows. I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm just gonna zoom in here actually. And I just want to draw a little window around this microphone because it's a bit of a problem. So we're just gonna go super duper quick. Just a little window. Okay, great. Now, if we select our highlight tool, we can see, I'm gonna press Z to zoom out here, that the microphone is the only thing we have selected. So we wanna invert our power window by pressing this button here, and now it's inverted. So just to show you how to do that, now we have our skin selected, and this is great. This is right where we wanna be. So as we know, if we go into our vector scope, we can see that we're basically on the skin line Interesting. I'm actually going to bring down my bump into the purple because I think I went a little too hard. Yeah, it's just a scooch on this situation. Boom. Now we're more on the skin line, which is great because we're dealing with a white light situation. So let's come at a highlight and we want to make some adjustments to my skin. So I'm just going to go into my log controls and I want to bring a little bit of red into my shadows. And I could bring a little more life into my mid-tones, but I think color-wise it looks fine. I look pretty darn saturated and I'm fine with the highlights. Now I'm going to, to pretty up my face and the instant beautifying, I'm just gonna lower the mid-tone details. We're literally just gonna bring that down. And if you wanna go like full plastic surgery mode, you can definitely do that. But I think that's a little excessive. <laughs> I do want some detail in my face. So I'm gonna bring it down to like minus 40 or so. So now that's what we got, but we're gonna do a bit of exposure control as well. I wanna bring down the gamma on my face just to increase that contrast, add some contouring and all these things and bring up my gain a little bit. And let's bring down the lift too, just to make me a little more mysterious. So now, yeah, that's good. So now we can check it out on our waveform. And if we see the before and the after, we just tidied up the skin a little bit. And it also helps us out for the next step of creating the look for the piece. I'm gonna hit Alt S on my keyboard for a serial node and then Alt L for a layer node. And then I'm going to grab my alpha channel and plug it in to this layer node. So the way the layer node works is this part sits on top of this part. So now that I have my alpha channel in there, it's just my skin that's sitting on top of this. So when I apply my look, I can have my skin kind of sitting on top of it, but I'll blend it in and I'll show you how I do that in a bit. So we're gonna go to our node underneath and I'm going to add my look. Now I like to add my look in the offset and I like to do it by using color, go down to the printer light hotkeys. So that's how I like to do it. I like to click on those so I can just use my number pad 
to change the colors. So let's say I'm gonna press four to bring the red channel down and I'll press nine to bring the blue channel up and then I'll bring up my green with eight or I can make it more purple with five. So yeah, I'm just gonna bring up my green a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, great. And we can check and see what the qualifier is doing for us. So if we disable our qualifier for skin, you'll see what we're looking at. That does not look particularly pleasant. We have very dead skin here and it's just not quite nice, but we take that off. That's looking better. Now I find this is a little extreme on top of here. So I'm gonna go into my node over top and I'm gonna go into my key output. And I just wanna bring down the amount that I'm outputting. So I just wanna bring it down a little bit so it blends a little bit nicer. So it does look like I'm part of the world, but my skin isn't totally washed out. It's still a nicer look. Now, we're gonna add a new node and we're gonna do a little bit of relighting. So we're gonna grab a power window, zoom out a bit here. And we're gonna grab this circle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it over my face. I'm gonna angle it a little bit and I'm gonna stretch it so we just have this oval. Now, we're gonna bring out the softness on this sucker a whole heck of a bunch. Okay, great. Softness is looking good. Now we're gonna invert the node just like we did before. So you can see in the little preview window and we can check out the highlight that we're basically not selecting my face, but seeing it in the preview window shows me that we should move it a scooch. Just gonna grab my power window tool and move it so that it is 100% over my face. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our curves and go to our curve here, and we're going to bring it down a little bit. So it, if we go hardcore, that's a little too much of a vignette for me, but just a little bit so that we're kind of relighting the situation so it makes it look like the rest of the area, aside from my face, is darker and I find it just helps a little bit. Of course, you can also make these exposure adjustments in your primary bars or really a ton of other ways of doing it. I just like to do it in my curve so I can control exactly where I wanna bring it down. So now here's the before and the after. So just a tiny little adjustment and we're gonna add a new node to clean up our shadows. Cause as you can see, Things are coming in fairly greenish, bluish down here, and you can see that on our waveform. See the red channel is super low. And if you wanna learn more about balancing shadows, check out this video up here. But we're gonna come into our log controls and we're just gonna drag the opposite color into our shadows. And all I'm doing is looking at my waveform and trying to get the red, green, and blue values to match up in the lower part of my image. So... Yeah, I'd say that's pretty matched up there. So you can see the before and the after on that. And now we'll just see what it's doing. Let's check before and after again. So we're really getting rid of that kind of bluish haze that you can see, but we just want it in the lowest part of our image. So we're gonna bring down our low range scooch and we can see the before and the after. It's just cleaning things up a little bit. And then the final thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move everything over here. I'm gonna add a new node again with Alt S and I'm just gonna do some sharpening and you can check out my sharpening tutorial up here because this next part may be a slight bit confusing. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go into my color space. I'm gonna go down to Lab CIE and then gonna go into my blur controls, go into sharpen and unlink. I'm then gonna grab my red channel because my red channel is now the luminance channel and I'm gonna bring that sucker down a scooch. Now we have it sharpened and we can see the before and the after. It just tidies things up a little bit and makes my beard stand out a little bit more. Again, if that was confusing, please check out the sharpening tutorial and you'll, it'll all make sense. So bing, bang, boom, we're done. We can check out the before of everything and the after by pressing Alt D on our keyboard, but Here's how we get it going quick. So now we've done everything in the group post clip. And the great part of that is if I were to make a bunch of cuts on this clip, and then I need to make, let's say a color adjustment, I can just go in to this group post clip, make adjustment to any one of the nodes, and it will affect the entire clip, everything that's in the group, which is just awesome. And another thing I like to do, we're gonna go into our gallery and we're gonna make sure that we're selected over our power grades. Now you may see me in some of these power grades. What we're gonna do, so we can right click and we can do grab still. What that's gonna do is it's grabbing the still, so it's grabbing the still frame that you can see right here, but it's also grabbing the node graph that we can apply. So be sure when you're selecting your still that you have the node graph that you wanna copy over open. So let's say if we're on our clip graph and we grab a still, 
it does not have that color data in there. And we can check that by right clicking and clicking display no graph and there's nothing there. But if we go to the one that we did when we had the post clip open, we can right click and display our no graph and see that everything is bing, bang, boom right there. And the best part of that is when I have a new shot, I literally just go in, add it in a group, right click on my uh, power grade and then just apply the grade to the post clip and it's all done automatically. And then I can just do any little bit of tweaking in here based on the different shot because it's all gonna be the same setup. Anyway, folks, I hope this helps you out with color grading on your projects and I'd love to see all the awesome things that you make. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. But anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.